What's up folks, it's Dan here from BeGameCharacter.com. Today we're going over the Kratos workout. Now Kratos is a character that I covered in the blog a while ago, but I've made some changes to work his workout recently, so if you've been doing the Kratos workout, or if you're just interested in seeing what the changes are, go ahead and head on over to the blog to get a quick summary. We're going to go over them here. Basically, I made the workout uh, a little more efficient, um, better results from the new format and stuff like that. So just go check it out. Uh, we're going to go over it here in the video as well. So Kratos obviously is a very powerful character. He spends most of his time, you know, chucking people around, wrestling with monsters, swinging giant weapons, stuff like that. So we are building a body based upon power and combat conditioning. Now, for the Kratos work that you're going to need, uh, sandbag, which I've got right here. I've got instructions on how to make your own if you want. Um, you can go ahead and check that out. I'll link it in the card up here and also at the end of the video. Uh, you're going to need a bench of some sort. Now, when I say bench, I just mean something that you can lay on that's about as wide as your upper body that will elevate you off the ground properly. Now, that, that can be cinder blocks or a, like a picnic bench or something like that, but if you've got access to a real weight bench, that's best. If you've got access to an adjustable bench like this, that's even better because that means you can do incline sets, which are my preferred sets for the exercise you're going to be using that for. You're also going to need a pull-up bar and uh, some sort of weight belt or backpack or weighted vest eventually to add weight to your pull-ups. You're probably not going to need that right off the bat, but you'll get there. And then finally, for the cardio workout, you're going to need a place that you can go running with a good set of running shoes and also a sledgehammer and a tire or something solid that you can hit with that sledgehammer. So let's get to it. So there are three different strength workouts that we're going to be doing with the Kratos program. Uh, you're going to do one each day of the week. You're going to do them alternating. I'll tell you about the schedule at the end of it. Um, but so for the first workout, we're going to be using our sandbag. Now a sandbag is great because it makes you work hand strength almost as much as anything else. It makes you work on something that's got shifting weight, so it's better for like grappling and stuff like that. And also it's dirt cheap. Like if you want to make one of these, this is like the cost of an army surplus bag and a bag of sand. Like literally that's it. So first exercise we're going to do is the sandbag deadlift. Doing a proper sandbag deadlift is just like a regular deadlift for the most part, except instead of having a nice bar to hang on to, you're going to be grabbing onto a bag of sand, okay? You want to start with your feet probably about shoulder width apart, toes straight, and you're going to reach down, and when you bend down, you're going to bend your knees, and you're going to sit back on your heels, and you're going to grab onto your sandbag. Now, you want to keep upright, squeeze your scapula, your shoulder blades back, like you're trying to hold a lemon between them almost. All right, grab hard with your hands, and all you're going to do is keep your neck neutral and stand up. Boom. Make sure you pop those hips out when you stand up, and back down again. One more time. We're here, we're neutral, got a neutral head up, and down. From the side, so you can see that my back is nice and straight, which is what you want to go for. All right? Don't do this. This is not what you want to do. A lot of people, when they're starting deadlifts, they'll bend their knees, but they'll do this with their back. See how my back is rounded? Instead, what you need to do is you need to bend those knees, but keep your back straight, so when you're coming down, See how my back stays straight the whole time, and then my hips drive through, squeeze that butt at the top, and then back down again. Your sandbag should basically slide up your legs. If it's not riding your shins up to your knees, you're leaning too far forward. All right? One more time. I'm going to bend down. All right? My head is up, not up like this, just neutral. All right? And I stand up. Boom. Sandbag deadlift. For the Kratos workout, we're going to be doing things in a circuit, which means that you're going to do a set of one exercise, move on to a set of the next exercise, so on and so forth, until you complete a set of every exercise. Then you're going to rest for two to three minutes, and then you're going to go back and repeat until you've done all the sets you need to do in a full circuit. So for the Kratos workout, I would recommend eight to 12 deadlifts per set, and we're going to do three circuits, so that'll be three sets. Our next exercise for the Kratos workout is going to be sandbag shoulders. To do a sandbag shoulder properly, what you want to do is you want to start with your sandbag running long ways between your legs, shoulder width, and what you're going to do is you're going to bend down like for a deadlift, but instead of grabbing onto the bag like from the front, you're going to grab around the sides like this, and I'm a little bit lower than a deadlift too, I'm almost like squat territory here. Alright, you're just going to stand up and put it on your shoulder. Alright, notice how it rocked me back a little bit, this is why sandbags are awesome, this isn't even that heavy. I think I've got like 50 pounds in here. So back down again. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pick it up and go to the opposite side. Like so. 
from the side. So, each shoulder is a repetition. So if you see something recommending, you know, eight repetitions, that's four sides, four to each side. All right, so you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For the Kratos workout, you're gonna do eight to 12, all right? And then, on your last rep, you're gonna pick it up, and you're gonna hold it on your shoulder for our next exercise. Next exercise for the Kratos workout is lunges. Now, lunges are kind of a finicky thing for some people. What I would recommend you do is walking lunges, all right? You're gonna have your sandbag on your shoulder, I'm going to step back but so you can see. And then you're going to lunge across the floor, all right? And you're bringing your weight up to your front leg. You don't want to be pushing off your back leg to get up here. Let your front leg pull you up to where you're supposed to be. From the side, I'll show you. You want to come down and you want to bend until your knees are about 90 degrees in the front leg, all right? And then you're going to stand up to that front leg like that. Some people can stand in place and do their lunges. However, personally, I do much better with walking lunge. You want to do 8 to 12 repetitions of that for the Kratos workout. And again, just like with everything else, you fit it into a circuit, which is why you finish the last exercise with the sandbag on your shoulder, and then you go straight into the lunges. Next up is hang clean and presses. So after you finish your last lunge, you're gonna drop your sandbag onto the ground like this. For a sandbag hang clean and press, you're gonna start off with your sandbag on the ground. You're gonna pull it up into basically a straight hang, hence the name hang clean. All right, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna bend your knees slightly, okay? You're gonna let the weight come down. And then you're gonna stand up and you're gonna pull with your arms upwards and arch your back and you're gonna catch the weight on your shoulders in front of your chest, and you're gonna do a half, about a quarter squat, and hang there for a second, I'll show you. We're here, whoop, and there's our hang clean, all right? From here, we're gonna go into our press. You wanna make sure you got the weight settled. You're gonna stand up. Don't let your body's momentum go into the press here. Do a strict press up, back down, and let it drop down again. From the side, all right? We're gonna start here, we're gonna drop low, we're going to stand up, pull hard, catch in the chest, reset the weight, stand up, press, and do the whole thing in reverse. For the Kratos workout, you want to do 8 to 12 reps of that, just like every other exercise. And these are really going to burn you, okay? Don't be afraid to drop the weight a bit if you're having a hard time at first. The final exercise for the first strength workout, strength workout A for the Kratos workout, is going to be called a Russian twist. Now, if you're not familiar, Russian twists, what you do is you're gonna raise your legs off the ground like a leg lift, go up into a half crunch, and then you're gonna twist side to side like this. All right, so one double twist is one rep. So you got boom, one, two, three, four, all right? You do these unweighted at first, and once they start to get easy for you, if you're able to bang out all eight to 12 reps of them, you want to grab onto a sandbag and twist back and forth, like that. So that's Kratos Workout A. What you're going to do is you're going to do all those in the circuit, 8 to 12 reps for each exercise, and you're just going to progress. You're going to do one set of each exercise, back to back, no rests. Then you rest for 2 to 3 minutes, and then you repeat. One set of each exercise, back to back, rest for 2 to 3 minutes, and then finally one more circuit, every set, and then you're done. What you want to focus on with these is proper form and technique over going heavy, okay? You're going to be getting tired. What you can do okay for the first circuit is going to be kind of sloppy for the third circuit, which means you want to start with a weight that you're comfortable with. And that might be a different weight for each level, which is why I recommend you go and check out my sandbag instruction tutorial because the way that I make them, it's super easy to swap weight out on them. So that's strength workout A. What you're gonna do is you're going to be doing this and two other strength workouts during the week. So you're gonna do strength workout A on your first day. Your second day is gonna be cardio workout A. We'll get to that in a bit. All right, then strength workout B, cardio workout B, strength workout C, cardio workout A, and then your seventh day of the week is gonna be a rest day.
Strength workout B is going to start with sandbag front squats. Now, on a sandbag front squat, it does make life a lot easier if you've got a bench or something to prop your sandbag up on, because otherwise you're limited by what you can kind of bear hug off the ground without hurting your back, which is not a great way to start yourself. Whereas if you've got a bench, you can start off with your bag mostly elevated, and then you can put more weight in it because you can start from a more upright position. So, for our sandbag front squats, here's what we're going to do. Alright, you step up to your bag, and what you're going to do is you're going to take your squat position as is, alright, with your feet shoulder width apart, toes basically straight, you might have to turn them slightly out if you're, you know, more comfortable like that, that depends on your body's mechanics, alright. You're going to bend down, you're going to hug your sandbag, and you're going to stand up. You might want to take a step back or two from your bench, and then from there, it's like a regular front squat. All you're going to do is keep your weight on your heels, keep your body upright, engage that core, you're going to squat down and come back up again, all right? Don't let your knees track inwards. Don't let them wobble around as much as you can. All right, just down and back up. Let me show it from the side. From the side, same deal, all right? Bend down, grab onto that bag, and here we go. You're gonna step back and find your spot, keep your weight on your heels. Notice my back is straight, my core is engaged. I squat down and squat back up again. For the Kratos workout, you want to do 8 to 12 reps of that, just like you did with workout A, and then you move on to your next exercise. Same as before, we're going to do three circuits. It is a circuit workout, so you do your squats, and then you move right on to your next exercise. Next exercise in Kratos workout B is going to be sandbag bench presses. All right? Now, like I said, if you don't have a bench, that's okay. You line up a couple of cinder blocks on the floor, you know, even if you just lie on the floor, you're on your back and bench press, they'll be fine. You're not going to get as much range of motion on your elbows because you won't be able to drop them back behind your chest, but you can still get some work in. However, if you have access to a bench, that's great. If you have access to an incline bench, incline bench presses are even better for the purposes of this workout. So all you're going to do for your sandbag bench presses is you're going to grab your bag and you're going to shoulder it just like you did on your sandbag shoulder exercises. You sit on your bench, you assume the position. All right, and then what you can do is you can grab onto the bag here and you can kind of use your knees to help work it up onto your chest if you need to. Once you're here, it's just like a regular old bench press. You go up and back down again. Notice that my elbows are tracking in line with my body. I'm not letting them come out super high, which is not really that much of an issue with the sandbag bench press anyway, but just so you know, keep those elbows in tight. Press up and down again. Now, for the Kratos workout, I like the incline benches a little better both for aesthetic and functional reasons. For the aesthetic reasons, you're hitting the upper area of your pecs, which is going to give you that nice rounded pec look, all right, which is generally what you want. For functional reasons, you're also hitting your front deltoids a bit too, which means your shoulders are getting some work in, which means that we're giving our shoulders some work for both days. Your front deltoids assist with most pushing motions that you do, even if you don't realize it. So working them on your bench press rather than just doing a strict flat bench, as long as you're not looking to compete in flat bench competitions, which I don't think you are if you're doing sandbag workouts, this is going to give you a little bit better total upper body workout. After our sandbag bench presses, we're going to move on to hammer grip pull-ups. Uh, hammer grip, if you don't know, refers to your hands being like this. All right, You've got them perpendicular to your body rather than parallel like with pull-ups or chin-ups. Now, if you don't have access to a pull-up bar that has hammer grips on it, Okay, just do regular overhand pull-ups. However, if you got the hammer grips, use those. Now, if you're not able to do full pull-ups yet, you can go ahead and do chair-assisted pull-ups or even resistance band-assisted pull-ups. I've got some info on the chair-assisted pull-ups in my video pull-ups and pull-up progressions. So if you're not able to do the full pull-up yet, that's fine. There are alternatives. Also, if you've got access to a lat pull-down machine, you can use that as well. But for the purpose of the Kratos workout, we're going for 8 to 12 pull-ups like so. All right, grab onto the hammer grip. You're going to cross your legs behind you, pull up and down again. What I want you to make sure you do is control yourself all the way up and down and make sure that you extend your arms all the way when you go down to the bottom. Obviously, don't disengage your shoulders and hang like this, but you want to keep your shoulders engaged, your lats engaged, and you want to pull yourself all the way up and lower yourself until your hands are completely extended. Now, once you can get in 12 reps on every circuit, then you want to start adding weight. And that's simple enough. You just go ahead and grab a backpack and throw some books in it or sand. If you've got sandbags, obviously, you can throw sand in your backpack. 
Or if you have access to a weight belt, you can do a weight belt around the waist and attach weight plates to that as well. And I would start low, throw five pounds on. You'll be amazed how much harder that makes your pull-ups, even just by itself. Your final exercise for Kratos workout B is going to be uneven push-ups. Now, uneven push-ups are very similar to regular push-ups, except you put one hand on something that is elevated, something that raises you up in the air. Now, to do the uneven push-ups, you can use a sandbag like I've got here. You can use a medicine ball if you've got one, a little more unstable. You can use a cinder block. You can use a pile of books, a block of wood, literally anything that raises your arm up off the ground. What these do is they're going to work your arms unevenly, and they're actually a good progression before you get up to one-armed push-ups as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to start off with one hand high and one hand low. All right. Regular push-up position, you're going to push down, up, switch hands, walk over, down, up, switch hands, walk over, down, up, switch hands, walk over, just like so. Now in any exercise routine that I set up, I recommend that you use one count for one side. So you're not like one, two, and that's one, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six. But if you really want to challenge yourself, you can count each side as one. For the Kratos workout, I recommend eight to 12 repetitions, and that means that each side is one rep. Kratos workout C is going to be a mostly plyometric workout. Now plyometrics, if you're not aware, Plyometrics are about using explosive force, okay? Usually not that much weight involved except for a couple of exercises. And what you're doing is you're building speed and explosive power in the various parts of your body for the exercise we're doing. Your first exercise in workout C is going to be clapping push-ups. Now clapping push-ups, all you're going to do is assume a regular push-up position and you're going to do regular push-ups because when you push up off the ground, you're going to explode off the ground with force. You can try and clap your hand once before you come back down again. And as you get better, you can try and go higher so you can clap faster. Now, the idea here is you want explosive strength. So again, you want to be not just pushing yourself slightly and slipping those hands in and clapping, you want to fire off the ground. If you're not able to do that when you first start out with regular push-ups, you can do kneeling push-ups. There's no shame in that. I would rather you go higher with a kneeling push-up when you're first starting out than be barely able to do your regular uh, push-up clapping push-ups. So even if you're able to do regular push-ups, you might have a hard time with these when you first start out. So again, you're going to start here like this, all right? You go down, up, clap, and back down again. Up, clap, and back down again. You want to try and keep your butt from raising as much as possible. It's going to happen anyway, but you want to try and keep your body as rigid as possible as you pop up. So from the side here, you're up, Like so. For our next exercise, we're going to bring back our old friend in the sandbag, and we're going to do some sandbag power cleans. Now, to do a sandbag power clean, what you're going to do is you're going to lay your bag out horizontally, and you're going to start basically from a deadlift position. However, instead of doing a deadlift, you're going to do a clean all the way up and catch, and do a quarter squat with the weight in your arms, and then you're going to put it back down again. So you want to start with your bag basically on your feet. You're going to bend down to a deadlift position, and you're going to stand up and pull everything you did with a hand, cl hand clean and come all the way up to the top. And notice I do a quarter squat here and then pop back up again and then back down. One more time, full speed. We're here, we come up. And then drop it down again. From the side, got our sandbag basically on top of our feet. All right. We go down, deadlift style position, come up. Catch that weight and drop back down again. For the Kratos workout, I recommend 8 to 12 reps, just like with all our other exercises. Our next exercise is going to be box jumps. Now, if you've got access to boxes for box jumps, that's great. But you don't have to be fancy. You can use a wall, or in this case, I'm using a tree stump, okay? And all you're going to do is you're going to start from basically a neutral squat position. You're going to jump up on the box and let yourself back down again. Now, if you don't have access to boxes or walls or whatever, you absolutely cannot find something to jump up on, you can do just regular tuck jumps, which is where you stand in one place, you jump up in the air, pull your knees to your chest, and then go back down again. However, these are a little easier on the knees because you don't have the landing to do afterwards. So one more time, we're down here, we jump, up, and then back down again. For our final exercise for the Kratos workout, you're just going to finish off with a 20-second sprint. All right, so you do your other exercises, and then you finish off right into a 20 second sprint as 
fast and as hard as you can. Now sprints are great because they're going to tax you no matter how in shape you are. If you're running as fast as you can, you're going to push yourself to the limit no matter what. So you're just going to sprint for 20 seconds and that'll be the end of your circuit. As before, we're doing three circuits, so you're going to sprint three times in total, one at the end of every circuit, and you should absolutely be gassed by the time you get to the end of your last circuit. The cardio portion of the Kratos workout is pretty straightforward, all right? For cardio workout A, you're going to be going for just a run, all right? 20 to 30 minutes. If you're not comfortable or able to run for 20 to 30 minutes, you can walk for 20 to 30 minutes and gradually ramp yourself up. You know, run for a little bit, run for a little bit more next time, whatever you can do. So that's cardio workout A. For cardio workout B, you're going to be doing sledgehammer slams, which is where you take one of these guys and you just go hit something with it, all right? You can hit a tire. You can hit a log, you can hit anything that will take some abuse for a while. And you're just going to swing your sledgehammer and you're going to alternate side to side. So you go one side and then the other side. You're going to do those for four five minute sets. Now when you're first starting out, that's probably going to be a bit of a struggle. So you can pare down the time if you want, three minute sets, four minute sets, something like that. You want to rest two to three minutes between each set and do four sets in total. All right, that's going to give you upper body conditioning, upper body strength, it'll work your abs a bit. It's going to work basically everything from here up and give you good endurance and upper body anaerobic conditioning, which is great for a guy that spends most of his time swinging giant weapons and chain swords and all kinds of other nonsense like that around. So that's it for the Kratos workout. As I said, your schedule is going to be a seven-day schedule. So you're going to do strength A, cardio A, strength B, cardio B, strength C, and then back to cardio A again, and then on your seventh day, you're just going to take these, you're going to rest. If you have a hard time with that at first, you can cut out cardio B on the third day, and it's, I'm sorry, no, cardio B on the fourth day, and instead, take a break that day, and do your sledgehammer slams after your strength C workout. So you do that the sixth day of the week, instead of the fourth. And you just cut out your second cardio A session altogether. So in that case, it would be strength A, Cardio A, strength B, rest, strength C, cardio B, rest. So you get two rest days instead of one, and gradually work your way up to working out six days a week and then taking one rest day. On your rest day, I would recommend you still stay active, go for a walk, stretch, stuff like that. Just don't push yourself. Give yourself time to recover, because recovery is just as important as the workout itself when it comes to getting stronger, bigger, faster, everything you want to do. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the workout. And go ahead and check it out on the website if you want to see the full write-up. i got some more details there. As I mentioned at the end of the video here, I'm going to go ahead and link to my sandbag construction tutorial. And I'll also link to the workout itself. So thanks for watching again. As always, remember, live boldly, change the world, and continue to be awesome. Bye-bye.